Ryan. We're not even sure that Paul Ryan is going to come. He may have snuck in the back door. He may not have snuck in the back door. We're getting mixed signals all around. Either way, we know that Paul Ryan is afraid of us because we are here with a message. We are here with a message that the that the American Denial of Healthcare Act is legislative murder. He is trying to kill millions of our citizens through denial of care. And we New Yorkers will not stand for it. We will not stand for him to be in our town any more than we will stand for Donald Trump to return to this town until they get the message that we will not stand for this. How do you feel about this welcoming of Paul Ryan by Eva Moskowitz to a charter school called Success Academy. What's the connection? Eva Moskowitz is a traitor to the children of New York City. She sits there in her office as the as the, the demigoddess over her over all of her charter schools, raking in three quarters of a million dollars a year while the teachers even in her charter schools make crap and while she siphons off money from the public schools of New York, just like Paul Ryan threatens to siphon off money to help disabled children through, through his cuts to Medicare, she needs to be shut down just as much as Paul Ryan does. We will not stand for Eva Moskowitz. She may hide away in her ivory tower with her big salary and her no doubt housed in the Hamptons or Connecticut or Westchester or wherever it is, but we want Eva Moskowitz to know, Eva, we see you. We see what you're doing. We see what you're doing to the children of New York. And New Yorkers, real New Yorkers, will not stand for it. What do you think it means that Eva Moskowitz is a friend of Andrew Cuomo's and a friend of Donald Trump and a friend now of Paul Ryan? I think what it says and what it shows is that the political elites, the people that have been in politics for decades and decades, all compromise a single group, regardless of party. These people, for the most part, these people are all in it to enrich themselves, to enrich the oligarchs that fund their campaigns, to give lip service if they happen to be Democrats to the issues that Democrats and poor people and working class people and people of color believe in, but in the end, they're always going to vote for their financial interests and the financial interests of their backers. And that's the problem with our entire electoral system. Unfortunately, that's how Donald Trump got into office, even though he is the epitome of an oligarch. The problem is that Bernie Sanders did not win the Democratic nomination, and we can argue for years about why that is and who's at fault for that. Had Bernie Sanders won, he would be president now, because he was authentic. Unfortunately, we ended up with an entrenched politician against someone who claimed to be an outsider, and there are enough Americans who bought that. Americans who didn't listen to New Yorkers like me and like you and like so many other New Yorkers who have been experiencing Donald Trump for 30, 40 years and know what a scumbag he is and know what an evil person he is. If they had listened to New Yorkers, the people that know him best, he never would have gotten into office. Unfortunately, people went by what they see on the, saw on their TV screens one for week on The Apprentice and believe that that character. One of the things about this welcoming, people's welcoming of Paul Ryan in front of the charter school called the Success Academy is the diversity of representation here. There are old, there are young, there are people of color, there are middle class parents all here. What do you think that means for Donald Trump? I, well, what that means for Donald Trump is that he will never be able to capture any support from New Yorkers at large. I've been to, I've been to literally scores of protests since uh, since the election, 2016 election. At most, I've seen 25 pro-Trump people. Usually, they get frightened and run away. Uh, Donald Trump does not embody New York values. He doesn't embody American values. There's a reason that Hillary Clinton got three million more votes than he did, and that there were a total of something like nine to 12 million votes more for other candidates than there were for him. He well, doesn't. one of the things that I think most people are forgetting is how many people did not vote 
who are eligible. We hear about this candidate got more than that candidate, but 47% of Americans that could have been voting did not vote. But I want to ask you a question about parents. And I'd like to bring you in if I could. Yeah. About, you know, there are, there are parents whose children are in this school. And those parents have said to me, I don't care about the politics of education. What I care about is the quality of education that my child gets. That's why I'm happy they're at the Success Academy. And I think you people about healthcare should understand that education is also a choice. Now, what do you say to that parent? Um, I would say you're in the sunken place. Because I've been uptown maybe a quarter of a century. I've known Harlem since there were crack dealers and crack addicts on every corner, abandoned brownstones, and you can still get shot walking down the street. So a few people come up here with money. The prices go up when they see us on the goes to neighborhood. No, when we, I'm sorry, when we see Caucasian people, the first thing we think is there goes to neighborhood. Because now we can no longer afford to live in the places where we bled and suffered and held on. And the school system was horrible. Now, ten white people move uptown, and then all of a sudden, oh, Success Academy. Where was Success Academy 20 years ago, and 30 years ago, and 10 years ago, and 15 years ago? So I don't know what parents are saying. They don't care about politics, but I bet you the black mothers are having a fit that this lying, spineless, gutless, worthless excuse for humanity is speaking in front of their children because there's nothing he can say to a black child. Nothing. He is black America's worst fucking enemy. He can't say shit to a child of color. And I wish my kid was in that school because the Secret Service would be carrying me away right now. So to all the parents who don't care about politics, because it hasn't hit you yet. Because you're living in a $3 million brownstone that used to be $25,000. What, if I, said, what if I said to you, though, that 93% of the children in this Success mm -hmm. Academy are black children? I would like to, you to point out to me what parents said they don't care about politics because I will have a speech for them. Because politics is local. Everything affects us, from the judges to the district attorneys to um, the school council to the city council to the school board. Everything affects us. And I need to find the black parents that said politics don't matter. Let them come out here. Let I, them. I, Let I, them. I, am, I, am, um, I just want to say to you that everything you've said also, I could say, as an old yes. white, as a white you gay know. man who lives in the West Village. You know, that is, I remember my aunt's boyfriend, don't ask, but they loved each other. He lived on uh, 22nd Street, paid $400 a month for a two-bedroom and a brown stone. God bless him. He's no longer with us and neither is she. But uh, the West Village was affordable. It was and diverse. And diverse. It was diverse. You could go to the poetry bars. The coffee bars, the jazz places, oh my God. Chelsea was like the center of Greenwich Village. And then when you got downtown further, you had the expensive townhouses. But Chelsea was affordable. Now, it's what, $2,500 for a studio apartment? Well, they're, they're trying to, all the old people that live there in re regulated apartments are under attack. I'm in an 18-month eviction. I'm an old white gay man. So I really identified with what you talk about what happened to a black neighborhood when a you know few people happened? come in with money this and buy it up. It's the middle class that's being destroyed because if that's you're poor, right. you can get public housing, you can get benefits, and if you're rich, it doesn't matter. It's us middle class people that are being squeezed out of the system because no one seems to care about us. We're not a high enough tax bracket to um, support these campaigns, and we're not low enough to no longer care. We care, but no one's really listening, so we have to speak louder. I'm in um, rent state stabilized building and uh, they took the apartment below me. I'm in a two bedroom and they made it a four bedroom and charged uh, That's right, that's what they do. And they call me every month. They took me to court for seven cents. So every time I paid my rent, I was a penny behind. So they waited and they said I was seven months behind. Over seven cents. Listen, if you understood the extent to which I cursed them out, you I do. I do. Okay. I do. It's called harassment. All right. This is what they do. They want us gone, and we're not going anywhere. We're not leaving. You will leave before we will. That's right. We will see you back in Wisconsin on a dairy farm, milking cows and goats for cheese before you will see another term in 
Congress. We will destroy you. Just wait. Give us the 20. That's a message to Paul Ryan. Do you want to add anything to this eloquent, articulate neighborhood woman? All I would like to say is to those parents that you were referring yes. to, yes. Let's find I call them. those people, I got minders. Okay. Yeah, I got mine. Once they got, once they got theirs, they don't care about anyone else. And the truth right. is, that if you want to be a responsible member of any community, you have to care for the entire community. Entire. You have to care for the poor. You have to care for the homeless. You have to care for the working class, for the middle class, the upper class can take care of themselves. But you have to care for the community as a whole. And if you, just because you managed to, to to make it make it through and get a great education and and and, and get a high paying job, and you decide to live in the neighborhood. And the neighborhood that's predominantly people that look like you, brown people that look like you, that's that's not the end of it. You have a responsibility to that neighborhood to better the neighborhood. And letting Eva Moskowitz come in and putting your child in Eva Moskowitz says little 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 segregationist school, little talented tenth school is not what is going to do anything to improve the neighborhood. You have to Go, become a member of the school board. You have to fight for the public schools. You have to fight for resources. You have to get in the mayor's face. You can't just let these corporations come in and pluck your children out because they come from relatively new money or even relatively old money, and they have good grades because they've had they've had um, quality education. They've had they've had quality education, but also they've had advantages. They've had privileges that a lot of the other kids in the neighborhood, the kids that are living in the projects, didn't have. And when you cut, when you come into a neighborhood like this, you have to be responsive to the entire neighborhood. You know, one of, one of the people, one of the people that I spoke with used the term economic terrorist to describe the class of people that are undermining the U.S. Constitution and what exactly made America a democracy, which was public housing, no. And affordable, let me just finish. Okay. Affordable housing, mm -hmm. health care, and public schools where everyone was treated equally. Right. Do you agree with America, that economic terrorist idea? We were never a democracy, and when we recognize that, we'll stop being butthurt. We are a um, democratic republic. Mm -hmm. A true democracy is France. One person, one vote. They always found, they, when they founded the country, they gave the slave owners in Wisconsin as much voting rights as 67 people in California. Wisconsin, Virginia. <laughs> Virginia, Wisconsin, um, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, the Rust Belt states. So it was never one vote, one person. And so this country was built on slavery, it was built on racism, it was built on bigotry, and genocide, and, and genocide of the Native Americans, genocide of uh, people of color. And Andrew Carnegie, who was an OGLIAR, built the public school system and the library system because he got sick of what money was doing, and at the end of his life, he started giving it all away. We better get that virus out again. I mean, we, those rich people need to be made sick at what they're doing to Andrew this country. Andrew Carnegie realized how evil money could be could be and decided to do something beneficial with his money. People know him for Carnegie Hall. Very few people well, understand. Well, so do, so do Bill Gates and, and his Bill wife. And Bill Gates. There's yeah. some people who realize that money should be used for good and not for evil. So yeah, they are economic terrorists because they want to enforce the status quo, which is to make themselves even more rich. So but, yes, that's appropriate. But meanwhile, we have what we have instead of a lot of Andrew Carnegie's and Bill Gates's, what we have Paul is Ryan's. rich oligarchs who are who have foreign places, who foreign groups like the Council for National Policy. Anyone who sees this video needs to look for look up the Council of National Policy. Betsy DeVos and all her family are a part of it. The Mercers who people talk about, they are a part of it. Kellyanne Conway and Steve Bannon are part of it. And it was only when it became clear that Trump was going to be the nominee, when it became clear that nobody else could could touch him, that's when Kellyanne suddenly quit the Cruz campaign in the primaries, right. At, right. where she had Trump been board. reading Trump for filth yep. for months, yep. and then suddenly, well, because, the to, because, the, because the Council for National Policy said, Kelly, it's time for you to go over here. This is where we need you. Steve Bannon, it's time for you to go over here. This is where we need you. This is what the oligarchs in this country are doing. And unless American people wake up to it, they're going to keep falling for the same thing over and over again, just like they fell for Trump.
<laughs> well, I want I, I want to thank both of you for being willing to have this street conversation at a street demonstration. People talking to each other. Would you Would you care to identify yourself? Yes, my name is Regina McRae. I can be found on Facebook at um, Regina McRae. <laughs> um, the problem is none of us are each other's enemies. They keep dividing us and telling us to hate each other so we don't notice that they're robbing us blind. The 1% is our enemy. And when we stop fighting with each other and realize, take away labels. Who cares that you're white or that you're gay or that I'm black or that they're, you know, Caucasian homeowners and, you know, stay-at-home moms and this one's Hispanic. Those are labels that they gave us. We didn't give ourselves those labels. When Native Americans, Chicanos, Latinos, the LGBTQ community, African Americans, middle class whites, working class people, unions, when we all come together, we and get to the defeat. old people. And all <laughs> take young. We get to defeat the system. We get to tear it down. But we're so busy fighting with each other over utter nonsense. In the meantime, they're robbing us blind. Jay? They're pushing us. Uh, my name is uh, J W Walker, J A Y Militia W, last name Walker. I'll find you, on you can find me on Facebook as well. And Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us. And um, I'm just, uh, I'm glad to be out here. I'm glad there were so many people out hey, here to take watching. a stand Find against Jay Paul Walker Ryan and, 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 uh, and to stand against Donald Trump. A Trump New York Ryan welcome here. he deserves. Exactly. Yes. Thanks, Jim. Oh, look who just Hi, showed Jim. up in this. This Hi, is and Tim. And with Westview. Okay. Uh, this is Tim. Tim Murphy, Tim Murphy from Rising well known for street demonstrations <laughs> since the election of Donald Trump. Yes, do you like my sign? I figured I'd be real subtle. Well, yeah, I, I, th subtle. I think it's, about the only Dorothy. Is, it's not big enough. We need yeah. like the side of a pretty Well, he got up and named this writing. this morning. We need skywriting, yes. The, you know, I'm thinking of Dorothy Day today because... Paul Ryan identifies himself as a Catholic, a devout Catholic. Yeah, and I, in the and, of and, and, and I, <laughs> and I think of Dorothy Day, what she would be doing because she always aligned herself with people, poor people, and people in need, as opposed to Paul Ryan having lunch with Eva Moskowitz, the five hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year CEO of the Success Academy. But tell me why, Tim? Why you're here? Real quick, so hung so hungry, so hungry, haven't eaten yet today. Here, I'm um, here today, you know, as a member of riseandresist.org, um, to uh, send a message that uh, New York City opposes Paul Ryan's career, that he's devoted entirely to tearing down institutions of government that people and safety rely does. on, like health care and public schools. He has no purpose. He has built his entire career on tearing down things that people need and rely on. To How do you make the connection between Trump Care and the Success Academy, a charter school that's successful here in New York City? Which it's Paul Ryan? It has a list as long as its arm of infractions. It pressures teachers to. Um, they do all sorts of pressuring tactics to, um, you know, pump up their data to look good for their shareholders. That's that's not that's not public education. That's corporate profit making. Yep. Um, I don't have a problem with school choice when it's in a public framework. You know, the New York City has broken up schools into smaller schools and has given parents and students choice, and I think that's great. When it's just craven profiteering, completely coming from the private sector, and especially when billionaires are pouring tons of money into advocacy to gut public schools the way they've been gutted in places like New Orleans so they can replace them with profit-making machines, I think that's disgusting. That's all no. Paul Ryan stands for. And I think all it, privatization Ryan. And the, Let's and the, dismantle government and make dismantle everything Ryan. a company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the parents, you know, some parents I've talked to today who have kids in there are glad that their kids are having an opportunity for what they think is quality education. So I'm very glad that you told all of the people that watch us that they should go Google the success rate of the Success Academy and see what really goes on. But the American, the economic terrorist who has allegiance Paul Ryan has genuflected at are... What about the child who gets sick with a pre existing condition if Trump can, Whether they go to this school or the school around the border. Um, 
such good points, Jim, and you know, I'm actually so lightheaded from hunger right now. Okay, I'm gonna let like you go. Thank you very apparently. much for being here. Yes. And I wanna thank you very much for also One speaking. One last point <clears throat> is that no matter where your child goes to school, if you aren't on the school board and you aren't taking responsibility for what they're being taught, it doesn't matter what school they're in. When you get these conservative school boards that want to bring in um, history books written by American Legislative Executive Council that whitewashes slavery, that says slaves were volunteers, that they came over here, you know, for a better life, that uh, dinosaurs existed with man. It doesn't matter what school your child is in. They're going to get an uh, unquality education. Parents have got to be part of the school board. They have to go to school board meetings. They have to look at the school books that their children are bringing home. So what, words, are what words do you have to the city council people and to the mayor of New York City about what's happening here today? I'm disgusted that he's even allowed in this city. Uh, New York City hates Paul Ryan. He has no business here. In the, uh, New York is the capital of the world in uh, every aspect, including its diversity. And for you to be a single issue person, rich folks, this is only issue. He doesn't belong here, and he damn sure doesn't belong speaking to children of color. I wish I had a child in that school. That's all I can say. And Why do you wish you had a child in that school? Oh, because my child is trained up to speak out, okay. and she would have led a children's protest, and there'd have been eight-year-olds with signs and walking out of the classroom. My child was a hellion. And so um, if she was in this school, it, it would have been a lot of... Like, like mother, daughter. like daughter. Thank you, Regina yes. McRae. Spell that, McRae. M-C-R-A-E. M-C-R-A-E, Virginia McRae. Regina McRae on Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.